Alhamdulillah wa salatu wa salam ala nabiyyina Muhammad wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa sallam amma ba'da habitu fillah Our ta'a, our obedience to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and our worship has different levels. There are different maratib, different levels of worship and there's different levels of iman. We often, we often should reflect that iman has different levels. And people's iman can sometimes, iman fluctuates as well. Iman can be high and iman can be low. Uh, and so we have to realize that there are different deeds that have different levels and will bring us closer to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And here's a beautiful hadith of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and we'll take some of the benefits from Shaykh Saleh ibn Ghanim al-Sidlan rahmatullahi alayhi rahmatin wasi'ah. And it's the hadith of Ibn Amr. An Ibn Amr قال قال رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم أفضل المؤمنين إسلاما من سلم مسلمون من لسانه ويده وأفضل المؤمنين إيمانا أحسنهم خلقا وأفضل المهاجرين من هجر ما ناهى الله تعالى عنه وأفضل الجهاد من جاهد نفسه في ذات الله عز وجل صحيح جامع in this hadith of the Prophet wasallam, very beautiful hadith, and we're going to gain some of the benefits that the Shaykh mentioned, uh, is the hadith of Ibn Amr, radiallahu ta'ala, and he said that the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi wa sallam said, the best of the mu'mineen, Islaman, meaning the best of the believers in their Islam, is the one who the Muslims are safe from his tongue and his hand, and the best of the believers in Iman is the best of them in manners, and the best of the muhajirin, meaning those people who make hijrah, those people who migrate, are those who migrate from what, meaning they remove themselves or become far away from what Allah has prohibited. And the best of those who perform jihad are those who make jihad against their own desires, their own selves, in the cause uh, of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. This hadith is azim. And this hadith shows us the maratib of uh, ta'at, that there are different levels of uh, obedience to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And in the hadith, uh, some of the important benefits that we gain from this hadith is it shows us first that people have different levels of iman and different levels of obedience to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and different deeds to bring them closer to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Some of them are those people who are foremost in doing righteous deeds. They are striving to come closer to Allah. They remember Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala often. They're making, they're, they're doing their wajibat of their salat and they're praying their sunnahs and they avoid the muharramat. They're on another level than the one who does the wajib but does some muharram, does some uh, sins, you know, some muharramat, but they do the wajib and they don't do sunnahs. And then they're better than the ones who even leave some of the wajibat sometimes, but yet, and they do sins. Okay, so everyone, uh, the Iman Mutafawat, they have different levels, and their deeds are of different levels. And then the Shaykh says, Women whom Valimun, women whom Muqtasidun, Kama Qala Ta'ala. So he said, and from them, meaning uh, from the people of Iman, are those who are oppressors. They, they oppress. And those who are in the middle. And then he uses, he makes istidlal of the ayat where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, fi kitab al-kareem, fa minhum zalimun li nafsihi, wa minhum muqtasidun, wa minhum sabakum bil khayrat. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, fi kitab al-kareem, uh, and from them uh, are some who wrong themselves, wrong their own souls. And, uh, uh, and of them are some who follow a middle course. And of them are some who are by Allah's leave foremost in good deeds. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in that ayat mentioned three people. He mentioned those who, uh, who oppress themselves. 
they they uh, uh, they they oppress themselves. How do you oppress yourself? You oppress yourself through sin, because that sin doesn't hurt Allah. Perhaps it doesn't even hurt other people, but it hurts you. It's it's getting you sin. It's belittling and possibly taking away from your good deeds or outweighing your good deeds every time you sin. And you're not hurting anyone else, but you're hurting yourself. So that's how you oppress yourselves. You're not oppressing others, but you're taking away your own rights, so to speak. You're taking away your own haq of worshiping Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Allah has the right to be worshipped alone, subhanahu wa ta'ala, and you are not taking away that haq from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, but you're oppressing yourself and falling short in meeting the need, meeting the the right of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is free from need of his servants. So so men whom some of them they oppress themselves. And some of them they're in the middle path. That's what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentioned, those muqtasid. And then he mentioned subhanahu wa ta'ala and those who by Allah's permission are foremost in good deeds. So we would lead, need to look at the tafsir of the ayat to see who these muqtasid are, these ones in the middle. You know, what, what, what the scholars say about that. Are they, the, are they people who, just, who do the wajib but they don't do any extra deeds or they do some sins? We, we're not... Uh, clear about what that muqtasid we need to go to the, the tafasir but unfortunately we don't have time to do that right now but anyhow uh, that third group is those who by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's permission they're foremost in doing good deeds they're the first ones to remember Allah they're the first ones to do their wajibat they're the first ones to do that extra khair when someone asks for charity they're the first ones they get them before they ask perhaps those are sabiqoon uh, uh, or those are the, uh, as Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentions them, as the, uh, yeah, as-sabiq, as-sabiqun bil khayrat. As-sabiq bil khayrat. They are the, 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 those who are the first in, in doing righteous deeds. Then the Sheikh says, this tafawit, this uh, different levels, these different levels of the people, uh, it depends on the people's level of religiosity, and on, meaning how, how well they practice. And their deeds, of course, this is part of the practice, is doing deeds. And iman is made up of what? Three... Uh, Three parts to Iman, if you would, uh, so to speak. And that is A'mal uh, Qalb, Wa A'mal Jawarih, Wa Qawl Lisan, or Aqwal Lisan. So it is statements of the tongue, it is actions of the heart, this is a part of Iman, and actions of the limbs. All of that makes up Iman. All of that is Iman and from Iman. It's from faith. That's what faith is in Islam. And so the Sheikh said people have different levels and some of them they're doing those extra deeds and some of them they're falling short in giving the rights of other people but those foremost they're doing those righteous deeds and they are doing the uh, uh, good with other people and being righteous and kind and having excellent manners and the taqsir is, is very clear. The Sheikh mentioned something else that is uh, very beneficial. He said, and that from this hadith also, this hadith clarifies that the best of the believers are those who other believers uh, are safe from their tongues and from their hands, letting us know that it's a, a serious sin to backbite people slander people, speak ill about people. And of course, the exceptions to things like that would be in warning the community against someone from Ahl al-Bidah. It isn't that you, you hate a, another Muslim, no. But for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, for the sake of protecting yourself, for the sake of protecting the community, for the protecting, sake of protecting the deen, the itiqad, the creed of Ahl al-Sunnati wal-Jama'ah, the, 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 the practices, mu'amalat of Islam, 
that you have to warn against sin and bidah and, and the newly invented matters in the religion. And so that does not follow under uh, this slandering and backbiting. But however, things like slandering, backbiting, and spying, and suspicion, and sub and cursing people, and attacking people verbally with the tongue, all of those things are included in sinfulness, major sins, and they go against what this hadith says, that the believer, the one who's got that strong iman, other believers are safe from his tongue. And that's who we want to be. Bi'idnillah. May Allah bless us to be from amongst them. Ameen. And likewise, other believers are safe from their hands. That they're not the kind of guy, and subhanAllah, I'm going to just relate this. I'm not, there's no particular brothers that I'm mentioning, but subhanAllah, certain brothers were threatened in Medina. Can you believe, not just threatened from, I mean, these are gatherings of students of knowledge other students of knowledge who were favored by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to come to Medina to study in the Jamia over much of the creation. Allah favored them. And they threatened. I know a, a, a major student of knowledge who was threatened in the haram. We're going to mess you up. I'm going to mess you up. Subhanallah. It's hard to believe. Fights in the, the, those places even. Fights in the Islamic University. Fights in, in places like Damaj. They, those things, they happen. We're human beings. But at the same time, just think of the, the sin of a person like that who was favored over much of creation and then they, they go, they, they fight and they curse and they don't safeguard their tongue. SubhanAllah. It shows that, as the Salaf used to say, Al-Amal Thamrat al ilm that deeds are the fruits of knowledge. So that means a person who has real knowledge, they're going to have some real practice, some substantial practice. You're going to see some practice. It isn't just having these books and memorizing this and, and, and this and that and the other and no practice. I've seen people who memorize very strong and had the worst of manners. At least I did not, you didn't even really have any inclination to certain individuals. And I knew one individual who was very close to one of the sheikhs in Yemen. Very traveled with him and, you know, was one of the big students there. And the worst of manners, I, you, where you didn't even like this guy. But he's a Muslim, so you, you know, you give him his right. But subhanAllah, this Ahabatifillah shows the lack, the naqs in iman. The shortcomings in, in faith. And that it is going against the sunnah of the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and going against what the Prophet Alayhi Salatu, what Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala and His Messenger Alayhi Salatu Wasallam uh, orders to do. And the best of them is those who are best in manners. Let's go back to the to the nas of the hadith. The Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, Afdalul Mu'mineen Islamin, the best of the Muslims in their, the best of the believers in their Islam is those who the other Muslims are safe from their tongues and their hands. So the best of the believers with Iman in their faith is those who are the best in manners. So why is it that we have some, uh, some people who belittle the importance of good manners? And this shows, shows a nux in understanding. So I want you to understand this. This shows what? It shows weakness in some aspects of their fiqh. And meaning this is fiqh am, meaning fiqh in their understanding of the religion. When you see someone who belittles aqid, belittles not just aqid, I'm sorry, but belittles manners, the importance of manners when so many ahadith. Let me just give you two. The Prophet, aside from this hadith, the Prophet said, There isn't a thing that weighs heavier on the scale of the believer than good manners. And verily, Allah hates wicked and sinful speech. The Prophet was asked about the thing which brings people into paradise the most. He said, Fear Allah. And good manners. So that's why I want to I want to encourage this because we didn't get this tarbiyah. Unfortunately, many of us 
from an earlier generation in the Dawa in the West, and I would say even from other countries, because I've seen these characteristics in, in our brothers from Ethiopia. I've seen it in our brothers in Indonesia. I've seen it from Talib al in, in the Arab world, from everywhere. And, and the Somalis as well. I've known how many, hundreds, at least perhaps thousands from the different cultures, from Damaj, from uh, Dara Hadith and Sheher, from all over Yemen, from all over Saudi Arabia, okay? And a lot of people just didn't emphasize the importance of manners. They were missing something, which was a part of the Dawa to Salafia, but they were missing it. Look at these. I just gave you three powerful nusus of the Messenger of Allah, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. So I want you, new generation, to emphasize that. Show people what Dawa to Salafia is. Show them what Ahl Sunnah believes. Show them what Ahl Sunnah Tiwil Jama'ah practices. Share. Share with the people. The people come to have the open arms to them. Because how can you call someone to khair and you don't even set a good example for them? How can you call a person to khair and jama'at to tabliq who is on bid'ah and khurafat and sometimes some of them on shirk? But they're showing a better example because they make that a pillar of their da'wah. Unless you go against their sheikh and unless you go against their madhab, then they switch the game up. But in general, that's a part of their, their methodology. And it's intrinsic. It's not something I have to add. Somebody has to add. It's intrinsic, which means it is a part, uh, essentially, the essence of our da'wah. Because that's the Prophet, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Well, they asked Aisha, radiallahu ta'ala, anha, about the khuluq al Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. She said, khuluq quran She said, his manners is the Qur'an. Read the Qur'an, then you know about the Prophet, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Then you know about his manners. You know how excellent he was in character. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless us to follow the sunnah of the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and leave off all of our sins and all of our ways of departing and protect us and forgive us for any and all forms of bid'ah that we make. Ya Rabbil Alameen. Let's go to the benefit, uh, the last part of that hadith. Two important points. The Shaykh then mentioned, he said also that in this hadith also clarifies that the best of the believers or the best of the muhajireen are those who make hijrah from their sins. And that's according to the Nas of the Prophet Sallallahu letting us know, and we'll get to that point because the Shaykh mentions that in his, his benefits at the end, and that's what we're going to read. So I'm just making this point that another type of hijrah, it's not just leaving Darul Kufr, to, to Dar al-Iman, or Dar uh, bidah to Dar al-Sunnah. That's not the only type of hijrah. That's one physical type of hijrah. But there's also a hijrah of your own sins, and a hijrah from bad company. Then he mentioned the last point that the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam mentioned in that hadith, and the Shaykh emphasizes, is that mujahid fil amal. That also, that part of those people of Iman is and, and the best of them is the one who fights his or herself. It's not that you have to pull a sword and stuff like this. There is jihad al dafa and there's jihad al talab. Those those are well known. Okay? When it is mishroor. And in accordance with the Book of Allah and the Son of the Messenger of Allah, not according to Al-Qaeda, not according to ISIS, not according to uh, Boko Haram, not according to Shabab, not according to this Ahl Bid'a wa Zandaqa, not according to these Mubtadi'un, uh, Mubtadi'in, who spread fitna and bloodshed and killing like the Khawarij, who the Prophet Sallallahu said, al khawarij Kilab al-Nar, the Khawarij are the dogs of the hellfire. So we, we don't even care about those people. Those people, we don't want to have nothing to do with them. Except fight them with our tongue at least. And especially fight them with the sword of the sunnah, which is knowledge. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless us with al amin al nafia to defeat the uh, shubahat of Ahl bidah Amin ya rabbil alameen. So then the Shaykh said uh, that the, uh, is jihad and nafs. And jihad and nafs is referring to that internal struggle, fighting your own desires, fighting the, the want to watch that muharramat that you like to watch, Fighting your desires to smoke, that muharramat that you like to smoke occasionally. Fighting your desires to drink that drink that you like to drink occasionally. Fighting your desires to uh, do whatever muharramat that you do. Listen to that which is muharram uh, and so on, so, so on and so forth. That's jihad and that's fighting that, fighting that urge. 
when no one else, maybe you can do it in privacy. But fighting, but that jihad, Allah sees you. Verily, nothing is hidden from Allah in the earth, in the heavens of the earth. The benefits from this hadith, the Shaykh mentioned, he said, Avam Hukuk al Muslim. So, one of the benefits, he mentions four, because this is the way he structured this book. Uh, each hadith, he mentions four benefits. In this hadith, he mentions that this hadith shows the uh, greatness of Muslims' rights. Secondly, the importance of having righteous manners. Third, is that Hijra is not just leaving Darul Kufr, the, the non-Muslim land, to a Muslim land only, but it also is more general than that and more inclusive than that, meaning it also includes uh, 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 making Hijra from your own sins or making Hijra from a sinful area to a place which is uh, more uh, righteous and righteous company. And the last benefit he mentioned is jihad al nafs min the maratib al jihad. He said that jihad al nafs, that fighting your own desires and whims, is the greatest level of jihad, or one, or one from one of the greatest levels of jihad. And we ask Allah the Almighty to accept our good and forgive our evil. Anything I said that was correct, Subhanallah Azza wa Jalla. Anything I said that was incorrect, was to myself and the Shaitan. Wassallallahu alaihi wasallam.